Well, Shaq, I just have to ask you on a personal level as we get started. I know last year you made a decision. You wanted to live in Tampa. You wanted to look for a house, become part of the community. Just did your real estate agent take care of you? And are you happy with your house? Yes, my real estate agent, Eric, did take care of me. And he did a great job as well. And we love our house. It's probably the best choice we made other than coming down to Tampa on the house that we, uh, that we had. Yeah, Eric did a real good job. <laughs> Thanks. He told me he did, so I'm, I'm glad of that. But uh, I, I want to take you back to that time because there were some nervous moments for you as a free agent. And what's going to happen with my contract? Am I going to be here? And you guys made history as a Super Bowl team with every starter coming back. Tell me about the culture and how that happened. What went into your decision to, to come back? So initially, when free agency started, I knew I wanted to be a buck. It was just a matter of working out the right deal. And I had my agent, Drew, who I knew was going to take care of that. So once we got the numbers where I was ready to resign, I didn't even think about going nowhere. I didn't want to go nowhere else. I knew what we was building here, like had dynasty potential, and I wanted to be a part of that. It's just like our atmosphere and our camaraderie in a locker room is just amazing. I love being a part of it. And it's like the best has been since our Super Bowl run in Denver. So I see that a lot of similarities from this team and that team. So I want to be a part of that for as long as possible. That that atmosphere that you talk about, who who would you credit or where do you think is the the big part of that atmosphere coming from? I think from the top down to start with BA on down to the position coaches and then in the locker room, just like we got our leaders who go around talking to everybody, making everybody feel welcome to feel like a part of the team. So just like when our top guys doing it, it's easy for everybody to just feel welcome and feel like it's okay to be yourself and just talk and have fun. And when it's time to turn it on, turn it on and focus, but just, just that camaraderie and just the atmosphere is just amazing, man. Well, last year in the playoffs, your defense had an incredible run. You shut down Drew Brees and then Aaron Rodgers and then Patrick Mahomes. And we're thinking, hey, they've got everybody back. This could be one of the best defenses of all time. But the injuries have kind of slowed you down this year. I don't think you've had a chance to really show that till last week. Now we started to get everybody back together. Could you kind of sense it last week that, hey, we're, we're ready to do something special here? Yeah, is is blessing that everybody is coming back from injuries and we are getting healthy at the right time so we are able to play at one of our highest levels that, that we've been at all year and like just playoffs you always take it up like you already think you play 100 percent in the regular season but when playoffs come you take it up another 10 notches anyway so combining that with our with everybody becoming healthy again you should see a lot of tenacious defense out there just relentless effort and everything that we do and that's what uh, we need to do to help our team win, and we're going to do it. And did you feel that last week against Philadelphia? Everyone saying this is the number one running team in football, and how are they going to be? And you guys just played with great speed and, and really smothered them. Oh, I almost definitely felt it last week. Like from the first play, Jay White, Devin, uh, Twan, everybody just flying around making them plays early on in the game. And when you see somebody make that first play, and the energy they have after they make that play, we all want to feed off of that. We all want to get our turn to make a play. And that's like when we are at our best, when we thrive, and is when we got the high energy. And no matter who it is, when the opportunity comes for that person to make the play, they make it. And that's what uh, we did last week. Now, I know you guys played the Rams earlier in the season. Uh, you take a lot of pride in stopping the run, and you did shut down their running game, but they threw the ball on you. Uh, what did you see from that first game that you guys need to improve on? I think we need to get to the quarterback more. We gave him a clean pocket for a lot of the game. So I think if we could get that pressure on him, have him like the San Fran game, the last time they played San Fran, if we could assimilate that pressure, that we'll be in a good position. But our back ain't going to be good. They're going to hold up. But if you give the quarterback enough time, he's going to find somebody to throw the ball to. So I think if our front, what, five or seven, whoever rushing the pass, if we could get there, we're going to have a great chance of winning the game. Have you guys as a front group, have you kind of talked about that this week, how you need to be dominant? 
uh, we talk about it as a position group, as outside linebackers. And then, like, when I'm in a game or not a game, when I'm at practice, we'll see we talk about, like, our schemes and what we're going to be doing for the week. But, like, I know my coach make it very evident, uh, Larry Foot, he make it evident that we have to affect the game. Like, it could solely be on us if, if we dominate the game the way we're supposed to. Uh, first time you played them, they did not have Odell Beckham. They didn't have Cam Akers. What did you see from those two guys last week in their game, uh, watching tape that uh, makes them a little different offense with these two guys playing? You know, Odell is a great playmaker. He's a great receiver. You always got to, like, it, it makes it hard because you can't double him in uh cup. So it just makes it that we got to pick who we pick our poison and then put our best con on one of them and then double the other two and hopefully not hopefully and then our pressure get there to make it easier but like it's going to be tough with uh Odell out there in cup and then with Akers you just see how hard he ran last week it's like he's happy you can tell he's happy to be back and he's fresh and he want to like pick off where he pick up where he left off at. so it's going to be a challenge for sure because they have been trying to run the ball a little bit more lately and we have been a good run defense but before last week, we gave up 100 yards a few times. So we're we looking forward to the challenge, and we're going to be ready to take it on. And, like, we're we going to do what we got to do. We're excited when teams come in and think they're yeah. going to try to run on us for sure. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things the Rams do, they use a lot of motion to try to get people off their game and fool people. Uh, what does that do for you guys specifically up front? Does the, the motion affect you, or have you done special things to kind of – cope with that this week? So it, it affects certain people on the motion majority, probably the back end and the inside guys, inside backers. But if you read in your keys, like they, they hide their plays well sometimes, and the other times they don't hide their plays well. So if you just pay attention to whatever you're supposed to be reading on that play, whatever your key is, and just let your key take you to the play, where it'd be all right. But don't be trying to do somebody else's job by looking at the motion. If the motion has absolutely nothing to do with you, and will be all right. But they, they do move around a lot, and we have to have great eyes and great communication to be successful. Mm -hmm. Speaking of eyes and communication, uh, Todd Bowles does a, a tremendous job with your unit. Tell me what it's like playing for him and uh, just Coach Bowles as a person. Uh, Coach Bowles, he's a straightforward, keep it 100 type of person, and that's all we ask for, and that's all you can ask for. He tell you, he tell, tell it to you exactly how it is, and like he joke around, he got a great personality, he's funny. And then when it comes to scheming it up, he's one of the best at it. Like he always has a position to execute some call, uh, execute the calls. He got the right guys to execute the calls. So I think whenever I usually never put anything on a coach, so because especially not Coach Bowles, he always put us in position. So if we mess up anything, it's on the players, it's on us. It's not ever anything that he did because he you know exactly like what's coming. He you know like the position we need to be in is just up to us to make the play. And he seems to have aggressive game plans. It's not like you guys are going to sit back. It seems like you want to dictate to the the offense. Yeah, yeah, we want to uh, most definitely come out there and be aggressive like Coach Bowles. He's known for, and look, like we just want to come up, make them plays that we need to make to help get the offense back to ball in great scoring position or a great starting uh, field position. So that's that's going to be a goal of ours and a goal of all the pass rushes. So when we get that to the quarterback, we know sacks is great, but strip sacks is even better. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I know with, with Todd, there's been a lot of uh, talk about him being a head coach, possibly interviewing for jobs. I know you guys want the best for him, but what would it be like to, to lose Coach Bowles from your standpoint? No, we do most definitely want the best for him, but it, it, it would hurt. It would hurt us a lot to, uh, to have him gone, and I'm assuming some of the staff will go with him. So it's just going to be a little domino effect. But I know BA, the the front office guys, they're going to bring in the next right guy, whoever that is. They're going to put that imprint on the defense, and we're just going to uh, be ready to work for whoever that is, and. I hope Coach Bowles get a job, but I, I hope he stays here too. I don't know how that's going to work, but uh, <laughs> it's going to be tough not having him. Yeah, Bowles I know how you feel. He, he's been fantastic, and uh, you can see it in you guys' play. 
Well, let me ask you this, just kind of final question. In your mind, what do you and the rest of the front seven, what do you have to do for the Bucks to win this game against the Rams? We have to play fast and just be decisive in our movements. Don't be playing around at the line of scrimmage too much. Just whatever we see, trust our uh, read and take it. Don't be just second guessing anything. Just like, I really think the 49ers gave us a blueprint on how they rushed and got after the quarterback. I think we uh, just follow that uh, blueprint that they gave us. We'll be in great shape, but just get off the ball. And if you're going on straight, go do go straight 100 miles per hour. If you come in inside, go inside 100 miles per hour. And just be physical and aggressive. And if we could do that, that means we're going to get sacks. We're going to be disruptive, disruptive, and we're going to be able to control the game. All righty. Well, thank you so much, Shaq. Good luck to you guys. Look forward to watching you play on Sunday. I uh, appreciate it. And I'm ready to get that job done. Roll to number two or number three. All righty. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck. We'll be watching. All right. Thanks. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.